October 22nd, 2024, NBA's opening night. Lakers' first game of the season in prime time. The world was ready to watch manufactured history. How'd it go? Hachimura san said, Get off me, son. Hachimura follows up that nice dunk with a good block here. He had a really nice game. This was just in the first quarter. Of course, LeBron gets the outlet and travels his way into an uncalled violation. So he gets two for this, but clearly he travels. You see the Wolves bench. LeBron on a screen and roll right here with Max Christie. You see him roll to the hoop and go up for a layup. He airballs the layup and touches the ball. So that's like a traveling violation. They actually called that one that time, but airballing the layup. Dalton Connect checks in, makes his way to the top of the three-point line. Bang, hits that three-pointer from about three feet beyond the arc. He's an instant contributor, first NBA bucket. Here's another good play. Reeves deflects Gobert's shot. AD saves it. Connect gets it. He decides he's going to take a cross court right down the lane, lay up between two defenders. That's the baddest Dalton I've seen since Roadhouse. This was the big moment that LeBron fans and the media were all waiting for. LeBron James and Bronny James Jr. officially checking in as the first father-son duo in the NBA history. Bronny James was only in the game for about 2 minutes and 39 seconds, I believe, and they tried a few times to make a play happen between father and son. They tried to get an assist to a bucket situation like two or three times. It didn't work out. But um, hey, at least they got that history done. So now the Lakers can focus on winning games and Bronny can develop in the G League. Okay, as a Lakers fan, this is the kind of thing that's been frustrating me about LeBron his whole tenure as a Lakers player. Number one, he can't even take DiVincenzo one-on-one. -on -one. There's no foul, but he sits there and complains instead of getting back on defense. So now you have a four-on-five situation. This is common. Lakers fans know it. But AD, anchoring defense, says, get that shit out of my house. This is my shit. LeBron was nowhere, not even in the screen when that happened. In conclusion, I was satisfied overall with J.J. Reddick's performance as the head coach in his first game. I was initially skeptical due to him being LeBron's podcast pal and all of that, but he might actually take ownership of this and do things his way. That'd be a nice change. What I didn't like was Kenny saying LeBron's still number two in the league and Shaq saying he's number five and Barkley giving him 11. It's like, look at this. He's not even on the leaderboard for the game at all. AD was obviously the best player on the floor. Hopefully Reddick sticks to his guns and runs the whole thing through AD. He's clearly the best player on the Lakers. I'm no expert. I just call it how I see it.